today. No one's buying NVIDIA GPUs. Intel's budget GPUs will destroy AMD and NVIDIA with this. AMD just announced a new gaming CPU, and it's here, the huge upgrade for your GPU. Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. First up for today, boy oh boy have the mighty fallen. Just a couple years ago, Nvidia's GPUs would sell out in seconds. Who am I kidding, when a new GPU came out, you wouldn't even get a chance to see it before it was out of stock. Today though, things have completely flipped. Yesterday, Nvidia's mainstream RTX 4060 was officially released. And like with the 4060 Ti, there are a ton of models that are still available, even plenty at MSRP. Sure, a few have sold out, but it's been a full 24 hours. Between miners effectively leaving and the supply chain returning to normal, things have flipped. So much so that over in Japan, at a popular PC hardware shop, literally just one person showed up for the 4060's release. Granted, the embargo releases around 10pm in Japan, but the store stayed open for this release. Yet only a single person showed up. Ouch, baby. Very ouch. That's a sharp contrast from the droves of people who camped out at micro centers across the country for the 3060's release. Basically, Nvidia had better step their game up and soon if they want to gain the interest back from gamers. Simply put, I'd argue they're still pricing GPUs like it's 2021 and not 2023. Fingers crossed that things change and soon. Next up, it looks like Intel could be about to blow AMD and Nvidia out of the water. But first, what do these items have in common? Vanilla ice cream, Honda Civic, plain white toast, and khaki pants. The answer? They're boring, probably like the browser you're using. But if you love PC hardware, you're definitely not boring. So start using the browser that was made for gamers with today's sponsor, Opera GX. The browser that gives you complete control so you're never bored, like their customizable themes that let you change around the colors and other elements. But really, that's nothing, because it also comes with GX mods, which can completely change your browser with one click. Want to make it play sounds from the game Doom? You got it. Want to hear a fart when you press a keyboard? Sure thing. They've got it and more. But my favorite feature has to be their resource control, which lets me see how much memory and CPU usage the browser is taking. And you can limit them so it doesn't interfere with your game. You can also go to the sidebar for quick access to things like Twitch and Discord. Oh, and if you use Chrome extensions, they work here as well. So what's there to lose? It's really easy to switch things over with the import tool. So grab Opera GX for free in the description below and join me with the ultimate gaming browser. Now back to the story. In our pursuit of photorealism in games, meaning rendering things in real time, not 20 hours later for some movie, we've gone through tons of new technologies that have gotten us closer and closer to that goal, with the most recent being path tracing. Think of path tracing as ray tracing turned to the max. It's actually way more complicated than that, but basically, it more realistically solves a lot of problems that arise with ray tracing. The issue is that it comes with a massive computational burden. So far, the only game that's implemented it is Cyberpunk 2077 with their new RT Overdrive mode. Unfortunately, that mode completely cripples even the fastest of GPUs. Now, in that game, it isn't exactly worth the hit you take in performance, but with better and better implementations, it will likely look significantly better. Regardless, it seems to be where things are headed. And that brings us to a new report concerning work that Intel is currently doing. In it, they discuss that Intel's been working on multiple papers aimed at making these processes more efficient. In fact, they claim that their neural rendering technique can achieve quote 70 to 95 percent compression compared to vanilla path tracing while also delivering interactive to real-time performance. In one of their talks, they state quote, with efficient algorithms, real-time path tracing requires a much less powerful GPU and can be practical even on mid-range and integrated GPUs in the future. Yeah, you heard that right, path tracing on an integrated GPU. To top it all off, they're apparently planning to make the framework open source, so it should be adopted fast. Now, they say that this tech can allow path tracing on more affordable GPUs, but then they mention their Arc GPUs, so it could be something that only works on Intel cards. And if that's the case, it could make Arc GPUs faster than Nvidia and AMD in games that support it. Time will tell how this ends up, but let's just say Intel's next-gen GPUs could be a serious jump in performance. 
Next up, if you've been following the channel, you know that a rumor recently surfaced claiming that AMD was planning to release the 5600X 3D, a 6-core 12-thread CPU with 3D vCache, set to be a budget champ. Well, it's now official, so if you like to stay up to date on all things PC hardware, make sure you subscribe to the channel. As you can see, the GPU was officially announced by Micro Center, and it is in fact a 6-core 12-thread part with 3D vCache and a base clock of 3.3 GHz and a boost of 4.4. Now, as the name suggests, it is built on Zen 3, but that means you won't need an expensive AM5 board, so anyone who currently owns an AM4 board or wants a more budget-friendly build, this could be a great purchase, especially because the CPU officially comes in at $229, making this the cheapest 3D vCache part around. With that said, there is one downside. The CPU is releasing exclusively with Micro Center, so I'm assuming that it's going to be a US only item. Not only that, but they mentioned that it's a limited edition, so it's clearly only going to be available for a short time. Either way, it's definitely an interesting release, and it'll be nice to see how it competes with their newest CPU. And lastly for today, in a recent video, I discussed the fact that AMD's own Lisa Su hinted that AMD plans to bring ROCM to their RDNA 3 GPUs. Well, it's now official, as AMD just announced that their new ROCM 5.6 release brings with it support for select RDNA 3 GPUs this fall. For those who don't know, ROCM is basically AMD's version of NVIDIA's CUDA. It's a software stack that comes with certain libraries, compilers, and more for professional work workloads, and CUDA is probably one of the biggest advantages NVIDIA has over AMD in the professional market, so AMD bringing ROCM support to more consumer GPUs is very much needed. Unfortunately, I will say that there are some caveats. For one, that select part is more important because it's only coming to the Radeon Pro W7900 and the RX7900 XTX, so at the very least it's coming to one new consumer GPU, but it would have been nice if it also came to the 7900 XT. It's also apparently only coming to Linux, so there are definitely some downsides. But I will say that it's at least a step in the right direction. According to AMD, they are releasing it on additional cards over time, so hopefully we can get more support soon. But at least for now, it is coming to the 7900 XTX. So while that does it for today, do you benefit from AMD adding ROCM to your GPU? And what do you think about their new budget 3D vCache part? Let me know down in the comments below. And don't forget to download Opera GX for free in the description below. And as always, have a great day.